uh, celebrities, they really are just like us until they start offing their spouses. It's all glitz and glamour until someone ends up in a body bag. So buckle up and prepare for a wild ride through Tinseltown's dark side, where we look at 10 celebrities who murdered their spouse. Michael Jace, the actor who climbed the ladders of fame by portraying the character of Los Angeles police officer Julian Lowe in the FX drama The Shield, experienced a life-altering event that shocked fans and critics alike. Known for his stoic portrayals and commanding screen presence, Jace found himself in a real-life drama far removed from the scripted world of television. On the night of May 19, 2014, Jace's Hyde Park, South Los Angeles home, was swarmed by officers from the Los Angeles Police Department following a report of domestic violence. As they arrived, they were met with a chilling scene. Jace's wife, April, was found lifeless, her body marred by gunshot wounds. The home that once echoed with laughter and joy was now shrouded in silence and dread. The man who once wore a badge on screen found himself at the center of a horrifying crime scene. Jace, once accustomed to reading lines from a script, found himself in an interrogation room facing questions about his wife's untimely death. His confession sent shockwaves throughout the community. He admitted to shooting his wife. This confession marked an unbelievable turn for an actor known for upholding law and order on screen. The news of his confession splashed across headlines, leaving fans and fellow actors in disbelief. The case was quickly escalated to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. Charged with murder, Jace's fate was sealed not by a director yelling cut, but by a stern-faced judge wielding a gavel. On June 10, 2016, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison. From an acclaimed actor to a convicted murderer, Michael Jace's journey is indeed a tragic tale. Jovan Belcher, the esteemed American football linebacker, was known for his dedication to the Kansas City Chiefs in the National Football League, where he spent his entire professional career. His life and promising career tragically ended after an incident on December 1, 2012. Following a night out, Belcher came back early the next morning to the home he shared with Cassandra Perkins, his long-term girlfriend. What began as a typical conversation escalated into a heated argument over Belcher's activities the previous night. The disagreement escalated rapidly, with Belcher's rage growing, leading to an unthinkable act of violence. In the heat of the moment, Belcher pulled out a gun and shot Perkins in their home. This horrific act was committed while his mother was in an adjacent room, caring for the couple's infant daughter. The sound of the gunshot echoed through the walls of their home, marking a devastating end to their domestic dispute and Perkins' life. In the aftermath of this shocking incident, Belcher fled from the scene at high speed and made his way to the chief's training facility. His actions in the following moments were as shocking and tragic as the incident at his home. In an extreme state of despair and panic, Belcher ended his own life in front of the team's general manager, adding another layer of horror to an already tragic event. All right, let's dive into the fascinating story of Gig Young, an actor whose life and career were marked by both success and tragedy. As a talented performer, Gig Young graced the silver screen with his charming presence and versatile acting skills. From his early days in Hollywood to his Oscar-winning performance, he captivated audiences with his ability to seamlessly inhabit a wide range of characters. But behind the glitz and glamour, Gig Young's personal life was shrouded in darkness. Struggling with alcoholism and mental health challenges, he faced a series of setbacks that ultimately led to a heartbreaking end. On September 27, 1978, Gig Young, at the ripe age of 64, married his fifth wife. His new bride was a strikingly young 31-year-old German woman named Kim Schmidt, who was known for her career as a magazine editor. Their union, while unconventional, promised a fresh start for the both of them. However, the bliss of their newlywed status was short-lived. On October 19, 1978, not even a month into their marriage, an appalling discovery was made. The couple were found lifeless in their lavishly furnished apartment at the Osborne in Manhattan. It seemed that the walls of luxury couldn't guard against the bleak specter of death that had descended upon them. The police were called in, and their assessment painted a grisly picture. They surmised that Young had taken his own wife's life before turning the gun on himself. The mystery that loomed large over this horrifying incident 
was the lack of any note or any hint at a motive. No words left behind to shed light on why Gig Young would murder his wife and then take his own life. The deafening silence left by their deaths gave rise to speculation and whispers of possible motives. Many began to point fingers at jealousy as a potential trigger for Young's actions. Despite the conjecture and theories, the real motive behind this chilling double death remains unknown to this day. All right, let's dive into the fascinating story of Claudine Langer, shall we? This French-American singer and actress has quite the intriguing past. Now, Claudine may not be a household name these days, but back in the glitz and glamour of the 60s and 70s, one name was on everyone's lips, Claudine Langer. Langer was the epitome of the era's chic elegance and effortless charm. With her ivory complexion, doe-like eyes, and sultry voice, she was a captivating figure in the entertainment industry, winning hearts both on and off screen. But Claudine Langer's life took a dramatic turn in 1976 in a chilling incident that swept headlines across the globe. Langer was arrested on March 21st that year for fatally shooting her boyfriend, Olympic skier Vladimir Spider Sabich, at his lavish home in Aspen, Colorado. The circumstances surrounding the case were as mysterious as they were tragic. According to Longjay, the gun discharged accidentally while Sabich was showing her how it operated, a statement that raised more questions than it answered. The trial that followed was nothing short of a spectacle. Longjay, once adored for her talent and beauty, found herself under immense scrutiny. The courtroom was abuzz with speculation, doubt, and disbelief, as every detail of that fateful night was dissected and deliberated upon. The jury eventually convicted Langer of negligent homicide. Her sentence, a small fine and a mere 30 days in jail. The judge even allowed her to pick the days she wished to serve. The Claudine Langer case remains one of the most sensational and controversial events in celebrity history. It is a chilling tale that serves as a stark reminder of how quickly fame can shift from dazzling lights and roaring applause to flashing sirens and piercing gavels. Despite decades passing since the incident, Claudine Langer remains an enigmatic figure whose story continues to intrigue and bewilder those who stumble upon it. Ah, uh, Phil Hartman, the comedic genius who left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. As a versatile performer, he captivated audiences with his impeccable timing, razor-sharp wit, and uncanny ability to inhabit a wide range of characters. From his early days on Saturday Night Live, where he showcased his remarkable talent for impersonations and sketch comedy, to his memorable roles in sitcoms like news radio, Hartman's comedic prowess was undeniable. He had a knack for bringing even the most mundane characters to life, imbuing them with a unique charm and personality that made them unforgettable. Tragically, Hartman's life was cut short in 1998, on the evening of May 27, 1998, a tragic incident unfolded that shocked the world. His wife, Bryn, had been out for drinks with a friend earlier in the evening. As the night grew darker, so too did the events that were about to transpire. Returning home from her night out, an argument ensued between her and Hartman, the contents of which remain a mystery to this day. Perhaps it was a culmination of past resentments, or maybe it was spurred on by the alcohol in her system. Regardless of the reasons, the argument ended with Hartman retiring to bed, perhaps in an attempt to cool off and escape from the escalating tension. The house fell silent as Hartman slumbered, oblivious to the danger that lurked just outside his bedroom door. In a twisted turn of events, Bryn entered his room, her mind clouded by rage or despair. And then she did the unthinkable. As he lay in bed, deep in sleep and utterly defenseless, she shot him shortly after she took her own life, leaving more questions than answers in this horrific tragedy. In his heyday, Spade Cooley was a household name. Renowned for his captivating performances as a big band leader and his charismatic roles as an actor, his charisma, talent, and charm made him one of the most sought-after performers of his era. He had the ability to draw in crowds and keep them entertained with his energetic performances, infectious personality, and unique style. However, beneath this glossy veneer of fame and success lay a darker side to Cooley's personal life. 
a side that would ultimately lead to his downfall. In 1961, at the pinnacle of his career, Cooley's life took a drastic turn. He was arrested, put on trial, and ultimately convicted for the brutal murder of his wife. Reports suggested that Cooley harbored suspicions about his wife's fidelity, suspicions that were later confirmed when she admitted to having an affair shortly before initiating divorce proceedings. Consumed by rage and jealousy, Cooley committed an act of violence that shocked the nation and tarnished his once lustrous reputation. Upon conviction, Cooley was sent to prison. His incarceration marked the end of an era defined by his musical prowess and acting skills. The man who once held audiences spellbound with his performances was now confined within the four walls of a prison cell. But even in prison, Cooley's life was not devoid of drama or irony. In a twist of fate, Cooley died while on a three-day furlough from prison to perform at a concert. The cause of death was a heart attack, an abrupt end to a life marked by both dazzling success and shocking infamy. Russell Neal, once a celebrated member of the 90s R&B group known as High Five, found himself embroiled in a disturbing narrative that sharply contrasted with his previous heights of musical fame. High Five was a popular ensemble that had tasted considerable success during the 90s, largely attributed to their hit single, I Like the Way, The Kissing Game. However, in 2014, the former music artist's life took a tragic and shocking turn. In an event that shook his fans and the music fraternity alike, Neil was arrested on charges of murdering his wife. This arrest came after Neil walked into a local police station announcing the death of his wife. The subsequent investigation led to the horrifying discovery of his wife's body, fatally stabbed and lifeless. This grim tale was further complicated by the fact that Neil and his wife were parents to two children who were inevitably drawn into this tragic saga. The fallout from this tragic incident was swift and far-reaching. The couple's two children were immediately placed in protective custody under the care of Neil's mother-in-law. And in a twist of fate, Neil was found unfit for a trial and sentenced to a mental health institution. The year was 1978 and the punk rock world was shaken to its core. Nancy Spungen, the girlfriend of Sex Pistols bass guitarist Sid Vicious, was discovered lifeless on the bathroom floor of their shared hotel room. Though the couple had a notoriously tumultuous relationship, marked by drug abuse and public altercations, nobody could have anticipated this tragic outcome. Instantly, suspicion fell upon Vicious. He was arrested and later made a shocking confession. I stabbed her, but I never meant to kill her. With these chilling words, he seemed to accept responsibility for her death. However, the story took another unexpected twist. Before the trial could reach its conclusion, and deliver justice for Spungen, Vicious died of a drug overdose. In the aftermath of his death, Vicious' mother revealed a disturbing note she had found among his possessions. It read, We had a death pact, and I have to keep my half of the bargain. Please bury me next to my baby. Bury me in my leather jacket, jeans, and motorcycle boots. Goodbye. These final words painted a haunting picture of two doomed lovers trapped in a toxic spiral of love, addiction, and ultimately death. This tragic saga remains one of rock and roll's most infamous love stories. The actress Faye DeWitt made her grand entrance into the world on December 4, 1934 in New York City. At the tender age of 16, she began her illustrious journey in the world of entertainment. It was 1950 when she first stepped onto the grand stage of Broadway making an indelible mark with her captivating performances. However, just as her professional life was taking off, her personal life took a tumultuous turn. Also, at the age of 16, she married Ray Allen, a renowned playwright who was 29 at the time, but the marriage, much like a poorly written play, had an abrupt ending that lasted just over a year. The curtains fell on their marriage, but the drama that followed was far from over. A month after their divorce, in a drunken stupor, Alan broke into Faye's sanctuary, her home. Like a scene from a terrifying thriller, he attacked her relentlessly, banging her head against a wall. It was a horrifying ordeal that would leave an indelible scar on Faye's life. In that moment of fear and desperation, Faye found her courage. She fought back with nothing but a simple letter opener in her hand. She defended herself from his brutal attack. In a tragic twist of fate, 
This act of self-defense proved fatal for Allen. She was initially charged for the murder of her husband, but all charges were dropped as the authorities ruled it self-defense. In 2014, a tragic event occurred that sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. Earl Hayes, an upcoming rapper, found himself at the epicenter of a media storm, but it had nothing to do with his music. The young artist was on the cusp of breaking into mainstream stardom, setting the pace with his unique style and undeniable talent. However, a dark incident shrouded his promising career in a pall of gloom. One fateful day, gunshots echoed from his apartment, piercing the silence of an otherwise mundane morning. The police responded quickly to the distress call, but what they found was beyond anyone's worst fears. Both Earl Hayes and his wife were found lifeless. Authorities concluded that Hayes had murdered his wife Stephanie in their home before turning the gun on himself. The news hit the entertainment world like a ton of bricks. Their peers were left reeling at the sudden and violent end of two promising lives. Stephanie Mosley, Hayes' wife, was no stranger to the limelight. A talented actress with a handful of notable roles under her belt, she was best known for her parts in The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 1, 2011, Catwoman, 2004, and Mirror Mirror, 2012. Her star was on the rise in Hollywood, and she was steadily carving a niche for herself with her captivating performances. Once again, it is believed that jealousy played a pivotal role in this tragic outcome, as Hayes believed his wife, Stephanie, was having an affair. Ending the lives of two promising entertainers, 